Well, what's up everybody so this is the third video we got in this series of instrument families um let me first apologize you know i didn't get a chance to get the video out to you guys last week i had some stuff i was trying to take care of with my schooling and with some stuff my fiance just started a new job so you know she's been kind of trying to get that stuff situated and trying to get the school the kids school stuff you know situated so that's kind of why i didn't get the video put up last week also i actually went to chicago last friday so i was supposed to do it up on thursday but i was prepping to do that so i didn't get a chance to get it up for you guys and i apologize for that but i got it done and situated now so we're gonna go ahead and and uh get it started so here we go so string instruments should be real straightforward simple so so instruments in this family are required strength to produce sound. I mean, that kind of makes sense. String is in the name. Um, so string instruments are typically made of wood. They have hollow bodies. All of them have hollow bodies because that's how you get some of the resonation inside of the body and it helps make the sound a little, a little louder. Um, and the strings are primarily made of nylon. Some of the strings are made of other stuff, but primarily they're made out of nylon. Um, so string instruments can play more than one note at a time, i.e. chords. So a chord is when you play more than one note at a time. It's usually two or more notes playing simultaneously. Um, so another name for string instruments is chordophones. Chordophone, again, instruments that can play more than one note at a time. So that includes strings, piano, which is also a string instrument. Um, there are several string instruments that are unique to different cultures. Um, so, for example, like the banjo is a specifically American string instrument that you hear in country and folk and bluegrass music. Uh, the sitar is an Indian instrument. The harpsichord is like, I want to say, way, way, way back. You know, the, the precursor to the piano was the harpsichord. It's another uh, time-specific or culturally specific uh, string instrument. Another one would be the oud. That's an Arabian instrument. Or the uh, the mandolin, which is also another string instrument. So, so in all string instruments used in Western music are pitched in C. They're all concert pitch instruments. Pretty much the only ones that aren't concert pitch instruments are the brass and the woodwinds. They're the ones that the keys change. Are pretty much everything else though, and most of the woodwinds are actually concert pitch. So, it's mostly just the brass that aren't concert pitch. Um, so there are over 300 instruments worldwide that belong to this family. I would say the string family is probably the second biggest family next to the percussionists. The percussion family is way bigger than the string family. If you look at the picture, you can see a lot of the different ones or instruments that belong to this family too. So, how do they work? So, string instruments require two hands to play. One hand is for pressing the strings near the top of the instrument. So. Um, if you look at the diagram of, the, of, the, of this violin I have over here, you see the part that's called the neck. That's where you put the one hand, the bottom hand on a violin, for example, you use, primarily use a bow. So that's where you, you bow the string that you're pressing down. That's how you get the sound. Also, you could pluck. That's called pizzicato. And whatever string whatever string you press at the top, you, pre you press that. At the, and you pluck it with the other hand at the bottom. That's how you get the note out. Um... So string instruments are played in one of three ways usually. Some pieces and orchestras require all three, but primarily you will see specific strings played in ways that are uh, unique to them. So for example, Bowen uh, requires the bow, requires the use of a bow made from horsetail hair and it's coated in this stuff called rosin, which is sticky. And what it does is creates like a slip sticky kind of effect on the string. So it gives it this sound to where the, it's not just, it, it gives it a nice bit of resistance so that the string is not just sliding all over the place. And it, it coats the, the string, the, the strings of the bow and the horse hair. Um, the way the horse, blah, blah, let me go back. It's coated, um, the rosin helps to stop the strings on the bow from like ripping up. Um, so what happens is the player rubs the bow against the strings, it creates a vibration, produces the sound. Those are pretty much all instruments in the violin family. So that's the violin, the viola, the cello, and the bass. Now, plucking 
is what I just talked about a little while ago. It just requires a musician to flick or pop the strings with his or her fingers. Um, guitars also and basses, electric guitars and basses also pluck. In orchestral instruments, so like strings that use a bow, like the violin family, it's called pizzicato. That's what they call it, plucking. Um, harps also pluck with their fingers. That's the primary way you play a harp. Um, you can actually pluck the strings inside of a piano or press the strings to mute the, the sound while you hitting the while you actually press the keys. It's kind of different type of thing. Um, and then striking occurs when something strikes the strings to produce the sound. That's primarily in the piano because piano has strings inside. And then when you press the key, the keys on the inside of the piano have hammers. The hammer strikes the strings, and that's how you get the sound. Real simple. So, what's their purpose? So, the string family is the most utilized instrument family next to the percussion family. You can hear strings in all types of music all over the world. The next I would say would be, would the first, so the most utilized family would be percussion. Next would be strings. Then third I would say winds. Brass are probably the least common. But yeah, string instruments you can hear everywhere. So in an orchestra, they provide the bulk of the uh, melodic content, meaning the strings are the primary instruments playing melody. They have melody all over the time for most of the pieces, um, and that would primarily be in the violins. Um, and they are the largest section in the orchestra. There are more string instruments than probably everything else, and I think probably, yeah, actually no, there are more strings because there, there are more strings than anything else. Like I said, the strings are carrying the bulk of the sound. Um... So, there are found in a variety of musical genres and ensembles. For example, you will hear them in classical music and orchestra and chamber music and soloists. Now, strings are something you don't typically hear in concert and symphonic bands. Those are reserved for wind instruments and percussion. You usually don't see strings there. But in or in classical music, you'll hear soloists like a violin soloist or a cello soloist. You'll hear them in chamber ensembles. Again, a chamber ensemble is just an ensemble where it's just featuring that specific family without any other families involved. And then orchestra is just a big thing where everybody's all involved. Okay. Now in jazz, you will, you will see this. Um, you notice it's not as many um, type of ensembles in jazz because... The only string instruments you will primarily see in jazz are piano, bass, guitar, and sometimes violin. Violin is not super common. If you go way back to like the 30s and the 40s, when you talk about gypsy jazz, violin was a common instrument because violin was something that was abundant over an area where gypsy jazz kind of got popularized in France, and violin was the primary melodic instrument, but you'll also see... Sometimes in big bands, which I didn't put here, I actually talked about that in the more popular type of music, but you will see somebody might, some big bands might use string players, um, but primarily in a jazz combo setting, which is a small group, you'll see them as a soloist or as a rhythm section musician. Now, we're going to talk about the rhythm section for us for a minute, and I've talked to this about, uh, talked about this with my students a little bit before. Um, the rhythm section is... The section of, uh, I want to say any like pop group or jazz group that is responsible for keeping the beat, playing the harmonies, the chords, that type of stuff. So that would be your piano, your bass, your drums, your guitar, possibly a vibraphone. That'd be any percussion. All of them fit in the rhythm section because their job is to help keep the rhythm and provide the beat and keep the tempo. That's their job. So that's all string instruments except for the drums and percussion that are there. Now, popular music, like I just said. So you have a soloist. You might, the electric guitar, probably the most known solo instrument in the world next to the drum set. Um, so you have, um, again, the soloist, the rhythm section, or the orchestra. Now, to rewind a little bit, like I said, in big bands, especially when, when big band music became pop music, because popular, pop music is just short for popular, and when big bands were the popular music at the time, a lot of them used strings. Also, in movie orchestras, movie orchestras tend to have a full string section with like a full size band, and then they might have a jazz band too that kind of doubles, and then the jazz band is kind of playing stuff with the strings, so it gives it a really big sound. And then the world music, world music would just be all of the different culturally specific strings that we'd see and have around. And 
you can go to different parts or even look it up online but different parts of the world you'll see and hear different kinds of music played by these different string instruments okay so types of string instruments so I broke this down into three parts and I hope it's not too confusing so three parts are the traditional slash orchestral strings, which would be the violin family. That's the violin, the viola, the cello, the double bass. Then you have the harp, the piano, and the acoustic guitar. I threw the acoustic guitar in with the traditional and orchestral family because of the fact that a lot of people learn classical guitar. And classical guitar is different than pop or like popular music guitar. It's a totally different sound, totally different technique. Some of it is similar, but... It's a different styles, a different sound, and it's different genre. So now we got modern and popular instruments. I didn't want to put piano again. Obviously, piano could go in this middle category, but the the popular or more modern stuff that you will hear would be the electric guitar, the electric bass, the electric violin, and the harpeggi. The harpeggi is actually a, a relatively new instrument created by. Uh, this company and what it I, I'll, I'll play you guys some of it. It's actually really cool. I'm, I'm gonna let you guys see it when when um Actually probably after this slide that would make the most sense Because I didn't make this video that long Only the only string instruments. I really wanted to focus on are the ones that you guys will be hearing a lot of So some of these I didn't put anything on and some of you know what they sound like so I didn't need to add anything to it So when I put culturally and genre specific so sitar that's Indian music banjo and mandolin are stuff you'd hear in like country music or even Mandolin you would hear in classical music the oud would be Arabian music the ukulele would be like Hawaiian music where people play like Hawaii like you like ukuleles for like pop a lot of people learn ukulele just to play songs on and yeah that's that so we're gonna go into YouTube now and I'm gonna play you guys some of these instruments that I'm not that I didn't do slides for so we'll do we're actually gonna start with the harp we'll start with the harp then we'll do the harpeggi, and then we'll do some of these culturally specific instruments, okay? So let's head on over to YouTube. So let's start with the harp, so you guys can hear what that sounds like. Now, the harp is pretty much a giant piano that you pluck. That's pretty much what it is. Let me see. So, let's listen to this right here. She, she's just plucking her fingers to play it. The harps are actually that size, and they also have pedals on them like pianos do. And they also read the grand staff like pianos.
this next one. Yeah, next we're going to the mandolin and a banjo. So you guys can hear what that sounds like. Then we'll do the sitar and the ukulele and we'll do the arpeggio last. So that's what a harp sounds like. So next we're gonna do the mandolin and banjo together. And I want you this I wanna see what this I want you guys to see what this sounds like. Actually, I'm just gonna play this. Actually, no wait, no, I want you guys. Actually, you know I'm gonna play the exact same song. So you guys can hear it. You play a little bit of this, it's the same song. You know, I don't want to play this, they messed up. So, actually, let's play this one. This actually is more culturally specific. I see the normal is like the small of the time. Sitar, so you guys can hear what that sounds like. Like I said, it's Indian music. You see all the strings it has, though. I don't want to cut this guitar for a while. 
I don't need to play a whole three minutes just to tell you guys kind of get the idea. Um, I'm actually going to play. I want to play this guy. You guys probably have heard this before. like a tiny guitar. You can only actually tune to the same string as a four string electric bass with it, which is another cool thing. So, I think they're just in a different order. They also make youth basses. I don't need to play with youth bass though because it sounds like a regular bass. playing this song you guys kind of get the gist i'm gonna play you guys this this her pagey though now this thing is cool i can't believe i didn't put this guy on my top piano or organ players this one organ technically electric it doesn't really use strings but i'm gonna actually play you guys this video of Corey henry playing Corey Henry is a freaking dog. I will tell you that. See, he's playing by tapping.
Y'all see what the video is. If y'all want to go check the rest of it out, I'm not going to stop y'all later on. We got to keep moving. Yeah, this dude's ridiculous. Um, I can't believe I didn't put him on the list of piano players. I saw Jacob Collier because Jacob Collier, but he's just ridiculous on everything. He plays like every instrument. So I didn't, I didn't feel the need to put him on there. And you guys can look him up if y'all want. Corey Henry is this guy. Jacob Collier is this guy here. And he's just absolutely like amazing. So we're gonna go dive back into the PowerPoint now. Um, so we're gonna talk about orchestral strings. So many members of the string family are integral to the sound of the orchestra. They are the violin, the viola, the cello, the double bass, right? All of these instruments in this family have four strings. If you look at the picture at the bottom, they all just look like constantly bigger violins. They're all keyed in concert pitch, which is in C. Um, and if you look at the names, I, at the names, I wrote the actual musical pitch range that they will fall into. So, that they will fall into. So the violin is a soprano, i.e. the highest. The violins read treble clef. Viola actually is special. It's the alto would be the second highest. Violas actually read alto clef which is something that I'll have to show you guys on my music reading video with something that we don't really need to know because we play band instruments and really no band instruments read alto clef, but it's just a nice little thing to be able to pull out your back pocket. Um, cello is the tenor of this family, and cellos actually read bass clef. There is a tenor clef, but again, that'll go into sight reading and how to read different clefs and, and figuring out notes on the staff video. We'll talk about that in a different time. And um, the double bass or a contra bass or upright bass um, read uh, bass clef as well. Um, so moving on, the harp is actually all of the ranges because the harp has four ranges like a piano. And the piano also has full range. So actually, let's go back real quick. We're on orchestral strings. I'm going to go play you guys the orchestral strings. And I'm actually going to play you guys. I'm going to bring back something I played before. So you guys can hear these strings. And actually, this is the orchestra playing it. We actually want to listen to the whole thing. So you can see. that um, I'm actually gonna play you guys another one this is something you guys also might know I want to play something different I prefer the Avengers theme I love it that's why I played that but I'm also gonna play you guys another song that's another orchestral song that's very violin heavy or not violin heavy but very string heavy
Now this orchestra is huge. They have they have vocalists too. And sometimes they don't have a choir, but they when there's stuff that has words, they tend to have a choir. Especially for movies, you will see an orchestra this size. It's a pipe organ. We'll talk about organs a different time. We'll talk about electronic instruments, and I'll just kind of sprinkle that in. I'm actually going to skip past the Davy Jones theme part. I wanted the main theme. This is... I'm trying to get the yeah, that's actually good. Yeah. I want the main theme. I'm sorry about that guys. Um If you ever buy anything from Apple, you should use Wikibuy. It's a browser extension that This is what I wanted. I feel the thing with the strings. The strings are playing the whole time. They're one of the only instrument families in the orchestra that continuously is playing.
You had the idea. They didn't play the actual part that I wanted, but it's okay. They played enough. Um, so, I already played you guys the other instruments, so I don't have to go into that. So, guitar. So, the guitar was invented over 4,000 years ago. Technically, the guitar was invented over 4,000 years ago. Just different variations of the guitar. The modern guitar... The modern guitar was actually invented a lot sooner than that. So, guitars typically are six string, although some have more. Um, that can either be acoustic, which means they play with no pickups or anything to be able to amplify their sound. They have to be amplified with a microphone. Um, they can be electric, meaning that they have to be plugged into an amplifier to be able to hear them really at all. Because if you play electric guitar without it being plugged up to anything, it you can hear it, but it's very quiet. Or they can be both. And some guitars are acoustic electric, which means they look like an acoustic guitar, but so you can play them either or. So they have a plug-in for pickups to be able to play it through an amplifier or a sound system. But you can also play them without that. Let's see. So the electric guitar was invented in 1932. You see what I'm saying? So the modern guitar, the acoustic guitar was invented way before that. The electric guitar is not even 100 years old yet. Um, now the guitar is one of the most versatile instruments known to man, and probably one of the, and probably the most popular instrument next to the to the drum set, I would say. And see, you can find guitars in almost every kind of music all over the world. Now, famous guitar players. There are so many. Famous guitar players. Now, the, the, the one thing, I'll, let me backtrack a little bit. The one thing I want to say about the string musicians and the string instruments, I actually put more than, than two sets of people because there were so many people I definitely, I couldn't pick. So, run this list down real quick. Obviously, you got the ones like Prince that people know and her and Tori Kelly, D'Angelo, uh, Babyface. But then you got other ones like Catfish Collins or Wawa Watson, um, Sugarfoot, who was from the Ohio player, the Ohio player, and Sister Rosanna Tharp, who was a blues singer, um, Tito Jackson, which is Michael Jackson's brother, Ernie Isley, who was Ron Isley's brother, Curtis Mayfield, Ike Turner, Nile Rogers, Lenny Kravitz, um, and you got all the jazz guys and blues guys on this side. So that's what's my gummy, Stanley Jordan, Herb Bell, it's George Benson, Joe Pass, Pat Metheny, John Schofield, BB King, Chuck Berry, Muddy Waters. So it's a lot of people. I'm actually going to go play you a little bit of guitar. And I actually, I was kind of, I wasn't rushing to do this, but I actually forgot the king of guitar, my favorite guitar player, Mr. Jimi Hendrix. And he's actually not on this list. So that's something that you guys, that's somebody you guys actually have to look at. I'm actually going to add him to this list right now. In the middle of what we're doing, I'm going to add him to this list because he was so integral he was so integral to what people were doing with guitar now, to what people are doing with guitar now that he cannot not be on that list. So, and actually, I'm going to play you guys a little bit of Jim, Jimi Hendrix. Um, let's do Voodoo Child. I actually played this for you guys before. I'm not playing the whole video. I just want you guys to hear the beginning. On the watch chart, but I forgot. We have to play good for them, yeah. So that's a pedal. Now, electric guitars can use all these different pedals. They give them all these different effects. They call it a pedal board. And that's what they do. What he's doing right now is called, is he's using a wah-wah pedal. And it's making the guitar, the guitar sound like wah. I apologize for the audio quality. This video is really over. Let me 
hands in it. So I don't need to hear it go into his vocals. Um yeah, let's actually listen to a little bit of Stanley Jordan. I actually want you guys to see him play live because the way he plays the guitar is different. Right now he's playing two guitars at once, yes. He's actually finger tapping. But he's playing two the cards at once. Yes, yeah, so I know y'all probably laugh at the bass player, but he's really into it and he sounds good, so I don't laugh at him. So, I don't need to go into too much with guitar. Y'all know what a guitar sounds like. Y'all know what a guitar looks like. I don't have to go too much more into that. Um, now, let's talk about the bass guitar versus the double bass. Now, the bass guitar was also invented in the 1930s along with the electric guitar. So, the bass guitar is the lowest pitch member in the guitar family. Um, they typically have four strings, but they can have up to six. And the bass guitar became popular in the 1950s due to the surge in blues, rhythm and blues, and rock and roll. Now, let me clarify that a little bit. It became popular because if you look at the two, actually, I'm going to talk about the double bass first, and then I'll clarify. So, the double bass is the, lower pitch, the lowest pitch member of the violin family. All double basses have four strings. They gained popularity with early jazz and blues musicians because they favored the sound and mobility over the tuba, which was the bass that they used, the bass instrument they used in the Dixieland bands. And it was easier to take those in the clubs and get them on buses and trains and to transport them. So it became better and the sound was a little bit more mellow and you could get it. It, 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 it just fit the room a little bit better than somebody playing tuba. And actually something... Remember I talked about Dublin in the Woodwind video? A lot of sousaphone and tuba players back back then when jazz and blues first started getting really popular also played double bass. That's just a little tidbit there. And it, yeah, like I said, it eventually replaced the tuba slash sousaphone as the main bass instrument until the 1950s. And that's because they invented the electric bass and it started getting popularity because it was even more mobile. You could do more with it. It sounded Better, you could crank it up a little bit louder. You didn't have to mic it and put the speaker right next to it. You can just plug it right into the amplifier, and it was a louder sound. It also fit the music a little bit more. So, that's that. Now, bass players. I kind of organized this list the same. So, I put more of the jazzy bass players on the left. I put kind of the guys who were in the middle, in the middle, and then I put some of the more modern people on the right. Now, if we run down this list, Stanley Clark, Ron Carter, Ray Brown, Charles Mingus. Charles Mingus is actually one of my favorite bass players. Paul Chambers, Christian McBride, who was actually a phenomenal bass player, who's actually still around now. He's not that old. Percy Heath, Reggie Workman, Oscar Pettifer. Oscar Pettifer actually played the cello and tuned his cello like a bass, but he also played double bass. Dave Holland, Eddie Gomez, Abraham Laborio actually is a phenomenal bass player with the slap style of bass where you use your thumb to kind of pop the notes on the lower on the lower hand that you use, because some people I can't say which hand because it depends on which way you play. Uh, Bootsy 
Collins is famous. He's actually Catfish Collins' brother, but he's more famous than Catfish. Uh, Larry Graham is a bass player, another popular bass player. Jocko Pastorius is actually the guy in this picture. Now, he's important because Jocko is actually one of the first people to embrace the power and beauty of the fretless bass, which actually is the, the grandbaby to the big daddy upright bass. Now, it's important because... Like, say, fretless, oh, so are all of them fretted? Yes. Typically, all guitars, electric guitars, acoustic guitars, electric guitars, and electric basses are fretted. What they did with a fretless one was they made the, the finger, uh, the fretboard, I would say, and the neck of the instrument not. They took the frets off, and it made the sound more similar to an upright bass. And it's tricky because the frets actually help you know where the notes are. Without the frets, you have to know exactly where to put your fingers but it allows some more slide and more pitch bend in it other little effects and also it also gives it a more fluid sound less percussive um so victor rudin keep going down the list victor rudin is a, one of the more popular guys victor rudin actually is more popular now he actually popular is one of the people who's pioneering on the six string bass and what he does is he'll he'll play he'll play six string bass like guitar he'll play a, the bass part the melody and the chords all on the bass. Um, Pino Palladino is a funky dude on bass. He actually plays bass with D'Angelo. So anytime it's to D'Angelo, that's Pino primarily playing bass. Um, we keep going down. Rafael Sadiq, Tony, Tony, Tony. Yeah, he played bass. Bernie White, Earth, Wind, and Fire plays bass. Esperanza Spalding, phenomenal bass player and vocalist. She plays upright electric, and she does, and she sings. And speaking of a lot of these people on here... More of the people who are still around, and even some of the ones who aren't, they double because a lot of people in in jazz music prefer that beefy upright sound. But then you have some like for smaller groups still play the electric, and if they want they're going for a certain genre like fusion or more modern. They'll go with that with that electric bass over the upright. Thundercat is also a modern bass player who's ridiculous. I bet you, I bet you guys, I bet you a lot of you guys didn't know Ty Dolla Sign is a bass player. Just to give you guys uh, a little bit of that. So we're going to go play. Listen to some bass players real quick. I think it's only right to listen to Jocko first because the picture of him is there. I actually want to hear him do Donna Lee so you guys can hear him move up and down this bass. And he's important because a lot of the people around this time were starting to think the bass is more as more of a melodic instrument as opposed to just oh we just gonna play these bottom parts and kind of keep it there. No, a lot of just he kind of pioneered that movement and bass players being more melodic with their instruments and kind of making it a more forefront instead of a background instrument like it had been previously. So I'm not gonna keep playing a bunch of this. Like I said, you guys can see what it is um let me see if I'll play you guys some more bass actually this is actually a video Todd Dallasan playing bass
Yes, you see him go with his thumb. That's slapping. Everybody. Son. 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 And I have a lot of respect for people like Ty Dolla Sign and her. Because when you talk about people who are famous and all, who are doing black music, so many of them, so many of them don't play instruments. And it actually kind of bugs me out that so many of them don't, but it's just the culture and all. But to see these talented young people that are around my age that are playing instruments and that play their instruments well, it gives me hope, a lot of hope for our music. So I'm actually going to play you guys one more bass player. I don't need to play you guys upright bass. I just really want to hear you guys, let you guys hear some of these guys play bass. Um, let's see. Yeah, let's just listen to this. Now this guy's like probably the probably I would argue probably one of the best bass players. In the world. For those of y'all that don't know, his name is Dwayne Maloney. His name is Dwayne, but he goes by Maloney. Uh, that's like his moniker. And he's probably one of the best bass players in the world. He also plays the guitar, but he's primarily known for playing bass. He actually played bass with her. And I didn't get to meet him, but while I was at Bass, he was always around. So y'all know what the bass sounds like, you know. At least most of y'all do. And it's just different people that plays now. The preference in strings kind of depends on the person. A lot of people start with four. Some people go with five because they want the extra bottom. And some people go with six because they want the extra high on the other end. And personally, I like four. I don't think you need the other two. But it just depends on your preference. And most of the people I know have a preference they play. Some people I know play four. Some people I know play four and five. Most of the people I know can play all three that are like proficient bass players. Cause I mean you just add an extra strings, but it doesn't it doesn't really change your already, you know, your previous knowledge. It just kind of just gives you more options to work with as far as directions to go that you want to do with, with when you play. So this is the last string instrument we're gonna talk about today, the piano. Now, the modern piano was invented in the 1700s. Piano is actually short for pianoforte, which means soft loud. Now, that's important because all of the instruments that precursor the piano, the main one being the harpsichord, can only play things at one volume. The P when the piano was invented, it was made so to be able to have a huge dynamic range. So you could play from really soft to extremely loud. Like I said. It was given this name because of the, 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 the dynamic range the musician is able to get out of it. Um, so all modern pianos have 88 keys. Now, if you talk about key, not, I mean piano, not keyboards, because keyboards have varying length of keys depending on who makes it, what you're using it for. For example, I have a MIDI keyboard. MIDI stands for Musical uh, Instrument Digital Interface. So it's an electronic keyboard I use to make my tracks on. And it only has 49 keys. So... A little bit more than half 
of that. But there's ways to kind of change that. And I'll talk about MIDI instruments when I really start getting into the production stuff with you guys. Um, but yeah, so all of them have 88 keys. Some some keyboards, keyboards, not piano, because keyboard is not a stringed instrument. It's modeled after piano. It looks like a piano, but it's not stringed. Now, pianos can either be acoustic or electric. Again, electric pianos are not stringed. Those are keyboards. But I just thought I would put it in there because, I mean, you can play piano. You can play keyboard. So the piano like the guitar is an extremely versatile instrument. So you can hear the piano in pretty much any form of music you name. Rock, there have their rock piano players, jazz, blues, rhythm and blues, hip hop, neo soul, country, gospel, bluegrass. Pretty much any even like 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 uh Lofi, um trying to think techno there's piano in so much stuff disco there's piano in so much different kinds of music so many different kinds so here's my list of famous piano players there are so many of these so many so many some of these names you know some of them you don't i don't know why that just did that like that but it's fine um like i said so ones that you guys know um john legend uh, Stevie Wonder, Aretha Franklin, Ray Charles. Those are names that you guys know. But then some names that you guys don't know would be like Duke Ellington or Thelonious Monk, Red Garland, Count Basie, Little Richard, who just passed away uh, recently, uh, Elton John, Nora Jones, Earl Hines, they call him the father, uh, Robert Glasper, who's probably my favorite piano player that's out now, that's modern, and Hiromi, who's also a ridiculously gifted piano player. And I'm actually going to play you guys a few of these piano players, just so you can kind of hear. The ones you know I'm not going to play, I think I'm going to do a little bit of Glasper, some Hiromi, and let me get one more. And actually, I'll do Herbie. Actually, and actually, I'll do Chick because you guys will hear Chick with uh, Hiromi in the video I'm going to play with for you guys. So. So. Just to show you how ridiculous these piano players are. You see, I picked this because these people, these two musicians, primarily play actual piano. They don't play keyboards. Now, somebody like Herbie Hancock plays keyboards. Stevie Wonder plays keyboards. I actually want to skip past this beginning part to when I actually get into the song.
keep going into that. Um, Let me see if I can find you guys some hard Hancock. Uh, solo on the keyboard. We have a secret weapon back here, too. On drums. That's actually a key song. a little bit of Herbie Hancock playing the board and the last thing I'm going to send you guys off let's see if we can hear Robert Glasper playing some keyboard if I can find a good one of him playing boards
he just doodling around on the keyboard. But yeah, so that's piano, keyboard. Got a nice list of people here. Y'all can go look up what y'all need to look up. That concludes this PowerPoint, and we just got one more left. I'm going to try to get it up to y'all sometime, either this weekend or next week. And after this, we'll be uh, getting ready to start going into the production stuff. So I look forward to starting that journey with you guys, and you guys have a good one. I hope to hear from you soon.